This is Democracy Now!, democracynow.org, the War and Peace Report. As we continue to talk about um, Harvey Weinstein, who has just been fired by his board as dozens of women come forward, we continue to look at the fallout from the shocking investigations by The New Yorker and The New York Times, which revealed the slew of rape and sexual assault allegations against disgraced and now-fired movie uh, producer Harvey Weinstein, one of the most powerful men in Hollywood for decades. Weinstein also a major contributor to the Democratic Party. Um, this is a clip from the NBC show 30 Rock in 2012, when the character Jenna, uh, Jane Krakowski, says she isn't afraid of anyone in show business and says she's turned down intercourse with Harvey Weinstein on no less than three occasions. How long will it take to get a cease and desist order against Weird Al Yankovic? Oh, that's too bad. Did they also take away your handgun license? Don't do it, J Mo. You don't want to mess with Weird Al. Oh, please. I'm not afraid of anyone in show business. I turned down intercourse with Harvey Weinstein on no less than three occasions. Out of and, five. And this is a clip of Seth MacFarlane announcing the 2013 Oscar nominations when MacFarlane joked about what Harvey Weinstein about Harvey Weinstein's behavior. The 2012 nominees for Best Performance by an Actress in a Supporting Role are. Sally Field in Lincoln, Anne Hathaway in Les Miserables, Jackie Weaver in Silver Linings Playbook, Helen Hunt in The Sessions, and Amy Adams in The Master. Congratulations, you five ladies no longer have to pretend to be attracted to Harvey Weinstein. <laughs> was in 2013. Seth MacFarlane has since responded to the resurfacing of his comment. On Wednesday, he tweeted, quote, In 2011, my friend and colleague Jessica Barth, with whom I worked on the TED films, confided in me regarding her encounter with Harvey Weinstein and his attempted advances. He's since courageously come forward to—she has since courageously come forward to speak out. It was this account in mind that, when I hosted the Oscars in 2013, I couldn't resist the opportunity to take a hard swing in his direction. Make no mistake, this came from a place of loathing and anger. There is nothing more abhorrent and indefensible than abuse of power such as this. I respect and applaud my friend Jessica and those sharing their stories for their decision to come forward and for being champions of the truth. McFarlane's response drew criticism online. Journalist Andrea Grimes wrote, quote, McFarlane's other material, in which the Family Guy creator sexualized a black child, mocked actresses for appearing nude on screen, and turned singer Chris Brown's history of committing domestic violence into a punchline, was widely considered to be more offensive than what appeared then to be a comparatively tame rib about powerful men and aspiring actresses. It was lost back then in a swirl of worse jokes. Only in retrospect does McFarlane's banal cruelty become apparent. But that that's the joke, I guess, Andrea Grimes wrote. Well, this is complicated, and we're going to um, take it apart right now with our guests. Um, we're joined by Tomi Ann Roberts, who described her story at the beginning of this hour, professor of psychology in Colorado College, who says she was harassed by Harvey Weinstein in 1984, when she was an aspiring actress, and that ended her aspirations. In Los Angeles, Louise Godbold is with us, wrote about her experience with Weinstein in a blog, uh, My Encounter with Harvey Weinstein, What It Tells Us About Trauma, who's now executive director of Echo Parenting and Education here in New York, Rian Carmone is the contributing writer in Washington Post um, writer. Her piece, Women Shouldn't Trust the Men Who Call Themselves Allies. So, your response to 30 Rock, I mean, a billion people is the Oscars or more watching. It infuriates me, specifically the Seth Far McFarlane joke, because I think there's a point at which we should think about rape jokes as such, as, well, as follows. Do they punch down? Is the rape victim or potential rape victim the butt of the joke? And I think that yucking it up about how funny it is that women have to pretend to be attracted to a man who was serially abusing them, something that he actually knew at the time. And said he was enraged by. He right. said he was I, that actually doesn't sound expressing like an his expression loathing. of rage to me. It sounds like, ha, 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 this is just the way things are. Girls have to pretend to like these monsters. 
That's, it sounds like it's a joke at their expense to me. Absolutely. It's the oldest joke in the world. Boys Professor of Psychology, sport. Colorado College, Tomi and Roberts, uh, respond. I'm feeling the same way. It's the oldest joke in the world, as I said. It, it reinstates the sexist power differential. It's, it's not just Harvey Weinstein 10, me zero. It's, you know, men at the Oscars 10, all women at the Oscars zero. Once you tell a joke like that, it's a joke about men being men. It's a joke about we all what we all have to assume to be the case, which is that these women had to use their sexualized bodies to get these parts, and now maybe they don't have to anymore. Give me a break. Well, Tommy and uh, Roberts, I want to ask you about another uh, 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 fact that's emerged uh, uh, with these revelations, namely that, and, and a very uh, disturbing one, is that Weinstein uh, systematically used women who worked with him or for him to facilitate a number of these liaisons with aspiring and vulnerable actresses who hoped uh, uh, to get work from him. So could you talk about that, the fact that he uh, made or, uh, uh, yeah, I guess made his, his female employees do this work for him. And then the second thing, which a number of people have pointed out, that his sexual abuse was by no means the only kind of abuse he dispensed. He was known for flying into fits of rage and systematically demeaning uh, uh, his employees, both uh, male and female. So right. talk about those different forms of abuse, how often they go together, uh, and also his use of his female employees for this purpose who uh, right. presumably the, the young actresses would trust more. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I think there are a lot of things going on here, not the least of which is that <clears throat> this is a man who truly objectifies humans. And by objectification, I'm using Martha Nussbaum, the famous philosopher from the University of Chicago's definition. To objectify is to use a human being as a tool, as a means to an end. To sexually objectify is to use a, a person's sexualized body as the tool that's the means to your end. It seems to me as though what we're talking about with a lot of these women who had to be part of this whole situation, it, it's Stockholm Syndrome, right? You get close to the power so that you aren't going to be the victim of the power. This is it, it, the systemic quality of this, right? Is so It's astonishing. It takes a lot of people to carry out three decades of this kind of objectification of human beings. And so you're gonna have to, you're gonna have to organize, you're gonna have to get the troops around you. The best thing you could do is to have other young women working in the service of this thing. And you convince those other young women in small and sometimes probably great ways that if they do this for you, he's not gonna do something bad to you. What kind of response, uh, Professor Tomi Ann Roberts, have you gotten since you've come out? I, I feel so sorrowful to hear um, the other interviewee's response of, you know, feeling re-traumatized. I will tell you that I have had, you know, my cell phone hasn't stopped ringing. I haven't gotten a lot of sleep. My email has blown up. Uh, with uh, people who are interested in hearing this story. I ended up putting an out-of-office reply on my email that said, I don't want to recount the salacious details of this story anymore. You, if you can read them in the New York Times. If you want to talk to me about the larger issues, if you want to talk to me about this way of treating girls and women ends now, then I'm happy. Uh, the re-traumatization is so interesting. I, I really hadn't thought of it, but I think it's the case my poor mother, who is quite elderly, had to receive a phone call as corroboration. Did she remember me telling her this story in 1984? Um, and that wasn't easy for her. And I think for the most part, I wanna say that I have received a lot of support and a lot of cheering. I'm a, I'm a feminist, I'm part of feminist communities. Feminists have surrounded me and said, way to go. Irene Carmon, uh, finally, um, hearing that NBC spiked this story, the New York Times had started a story 10 years ago, but that story did not uh, go forward. Um, what people can learn now and how you think this needs to be dealt with? And I want to end with the response um, of Louise Godbold uh, in L.A. on how people have responded to you. We have just less than a minute. 
I think we have to look at how we normalize this kind of behavior, how these kinds of abuses of power and acceptance of the kind of power dynamic that we've been talking about has become so normal that we don't even see abusive behavior hiding in plain sight. The stories of Harvey Weinstein were all about how he was such a character. He was like an old studio Hollywood head. People did not know the extent of this, but they also didn't know because he continued to make them money, and they would prefer not to Do find anything out. Do you think he will out. go to jail, Harvey no. Weinstein? If the I had to put New Yorker money on piece it, started with three women claim rape. I think that there seems to be evidence of a crime, but based on past experience and having been covering this for years and years, I would be very shocked if he saw the inside of a jail cell. Louise Godbold, you have the last 10 seconds. I am so glad that I haven't been asked, but I'm pressured by you to recount lurid details. I am not a victim. I am a survivor. And by telling my story, it has empowered me, and I encourage other women to take the situation and turn it around and let it empower them so they can experience post-traumatic growth. I want to thank you all for being with us, Louise Godbold, Tomi Ann Roberts, as well as Carl. Uh